So I think you can see that we're trying to walk the talk and show that vulnerability and connectedness is an essential part of health and well-being. And um, I should thank my 11-year-old who recorded that for us. I'm sorry, it was a bit wobbly. Um, <laughs> So um, I'm going to, it's my pleasure to introduce Joanne Egan. Um, Dr. Egan is an emergency physician at Waitemata District Health Board on the North Shore of, um, of Auckland. And she has clinical education roles within the DHB and at the University of Auckland. Dr. Egan recently completed her Doctorate of Health Science and her doctoral project was informed by positive psychology and philosophy. And it inquired how healthcare workers viewed their own thriving, so they could understand, nurture, value and foster this for both themselves and their colleagues. Compassion towards both self and others was found to be central to thriving. Thanks for sharing your insights. So one afternoon several years ago, a young mum came into the emergency department. She had her baby, who had been unwell with a fever over the past few days. Unwell enough to keep them both up. She was exhausted and they were both fractious. One of our ward clerks, who's a mother herself, noticed the distress of this woman. And once she got her clerked in and settled into the um, pediatric area, she went and made the mum a cup of tea. She sat down with her. She held the baby so that the mum had a chance to drink her cup of tea and have a conversation. To this day, it's that act of compassion that that young mum remembers about that trip to the hospital. It's also that act of kindness and others like it that make that ward clerk want to come back to work each day. Kia ora kato. My name is Jo Egan, and I have a story of hope, compassion, and joy in clinical medicine. I've spent the last five years searching for this, for stories like the one I've told you. What I'd like to do now is I'd like us all to have a bit of a speed date with thriving. I'd like you to think about your own story. Think about a time at work, some, a, a moment or an experience that gave you a little burst of energy, something that made you think, I'm glad I came to work today. Now I want you to turn to somebody next to you or behind you, and I want you to tell your story. You're gonna have two minutes. Those of you who are the listeners, hold on to your story, and I want you to tell the people when we break for lunch, I want you to tell somebody your story. Okay, two minutes, go. Our stories are powerful. The things that we notice, the things that we talk about, they ripple out and they influence the experience that we have and also the experience of others. This is not something that we do on our own. Well-being is something that happens, that there's a climate we heard earlier this morning, a climate of well-being. And, oh, excuse me, I'll just grab some notes. Worldwide, our statistics when looking at health and thriving are similar. All the, and the flip side also with burnout. We live in an interconnected world, far more influenced by one another, by our context and by our environment than we give credit for. Neuroscience, mirror neurons, and epigenetics are leading us in bearing out ancient truth and wisdom things that philosophy have known for decades. We are social beings wired for connection. Recently, there was a research group uh, that did some work on, on big data. They looked at Twitter language, and they mapped out Twitter language in different counties in the US and correlated that with, with mortality data from ischemic heart disease. And interestingly, the, um, the Twitter language, so negative Twitter language, negative and angry tw Twitter language here, gives a predictive value for ischemic heart disease that is more than all of the other individual predictive values put together. 
Our context matters. We each influence one another. We know that organizations that focus on positive practices, on compassion, forgiveness, on gratitude, and fostering meaningfulness, that they achieve on, on any number of, of desirable business outcomes. Positive psychology and philosophy have given us the ingredients of a good life. They tell us the ingredients of a good life. And these ingredients are a part of our healthcare systems every day. Acts of compassion, opportunities for high quality connections, opportunities to use our skills, random acts of kindness. These happen in our healthcare settings every single day, but they're not always available to help us drive our own thriving. And our research has been about accentuating these things, these aspects of our job that are always already there so that we can see them, so that we can discover and articulate them, so that we can nurture them, and importantly, so that we can value them. In our research, there were eight different themes that emerged. We're gonna talk about these themes um, and discover them playing a game. Um, around the room, there are parcels. Does somebody have, there should be six of them. If you could hand out those parcels, please, just randomly. Does everybody know how to play Pass the Parcel? So we're gonna play a game of Pass the Parcel. We're gonna have some music. These parcels are gonna be passed around. When the music stops, the person who has the parcel, there's six of them, then you can unwrap your parcel, and there should be a little white present in there. You can unwrap that and have a look. Okay, music, please. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break. Thank you. <laughs> okay, open it up. In the first layer, there should be a little gift that falls out, and you can open that up. If you could put up your hand when you've got your gift unwrapped. Fantastic. Okay, so the first three themes that we're gonna talk about, one of them is caring for self. Who's got some soap? Please use that in a bath to luxuriate. <laughs> caring for self came through in the obvious kinds of things. Good food, enough sleep, connections with our friends and family, and time out in nature. There were also stories of getting to know yourself, stories of the importance of self-compassion, stories of coming to understand the things that influence us and the influence that we have on other people in such a way that we can drive our own thriving, that we can choose our own reactions to different situations. Know-how. Some little books are around. Know-how speaks to our love of learning. Learning, perfecting, and teaching. Knowledge. It's so much of what we spend much time on as, as doctors. And the stories that came through in Know-how were not just knowledge inside our heads, but the actual practical living of that knowledge being able to grab the exact piece of knowledge that you know is needed in this situation with this patient or with these colleagues at this time. Aristotle called this phrenesis, the practical wisdom towards a good life. The third gift in this, in this lot of um, uh, themes is a medal. Who's got a medal? Excellent, congratulations. This is the theme of achieving, and this speaks to our love of fixing things, our love of excellence in medicine. The themes of, of achieving came through strongly, particularly when they were associated with making a difference, the action of compassion, making a difference in the lives of others. Okay, can we have the music again, please? 
Okay, time to unwrap. There should be another white, a little white gift to open up. If somebody could put up their hand when they've got one. I can hear the unwrapping. The suspense. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so the next three themes. The first one is, is connecting. There's a, um, a, little, uh, a little package with some, some Guatemalan worry dolls, is what these are. Uh, and you put those under your pillow, and they will take your worries away while you sleep. And this is representing connection. Connecting came through in all of our stories. And the, as we mentioned earlier, we are social beings and we are wired for connection. The stories of connecting came through in all of its different aspects. Connecting with our patients, connecting with our colleagues, and also observing connection. Watching our patients as their families come in and seeing the strength that they draw from their friends and their families. All of these different aspects of connection helped with our own thriving. And the chocolate. In almost all of the workshops and interviews I did, chocolate was a feature of thriving. And this time, it represents appreciation and gratitude. There was one afternoon shift a little while ago that was crazy busy. The emergency department was full. We had patients in our ambulance bay. Our waiting room was overflowing. And one of the nurses went home at the end of the shift exhausted really wondering whether she wanted to come back for another shift. She was feeling frustrated and, uh, and just exhausted. She woke up the next morning and checked Facebook, as you do. We have a, a departmental Facebook page. And on there, one of the other nurses who had been on had posted a post. And she said, it was a really tough shift yesterday afternoon. Thank you to all of you who were with me. And she named all of the nurses in her area. She said, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you for having our back, and thank you for being such a great team. This completely changed the way that that woman remembers that shift. Rather than the frustration and exhaustion, she now remembers the teamwork and the colleagues who had her back. Appreciation and gratitude seem to amplify the quiet, almost unnoticed moments of thriving in our everyday. What we do matters. The relieving of pain and suffering, the taking care of other people, the saving of lives, this inherently has meaning and purpose. And yet, it is so much more tangible when we are appreciated and valued for what we do. OK, and the bubbles. Who's got some bubbles? Feel free to spread them around. Fun was definitely a theme that came through in all of our stories, certainly in the telling of the stories. And as, as here, as you were telling your own stories, you could, the, the, the energy in the room and the laughter was tangible. We know that our brains, bathed in positive emotion, enable us to be more creative, more pro-social, and more inclusive. And certainly the fun that was had in telling these stories and in looking at thriving, these seem to, to lubricate social connections. It seemed to enable us to get to know one another a little bit better, to release some tensions. And not only that, it gave us a little pause. It gave us a moment that we could consider with a little bit of cheerfulness how we might respond to a situation. A moment that Viktor Frankl calls freedom, our freedom to choose how we react to a situation. Okay, last music, please. 
should only be two it might seem crazy now. what I'm about to say <laughs> oh thank you all sunshine so she's here you can take a break okay thank you okay you need to quickly unwrap your parcels and I'll start talking about them as you unwrap them as my time is uh, is running running slow so these last two themes the first one is seeing the essence within and this is a theme about being seen and genuinely seen and heard and it most commonly came through in examples of acts of kindness particularly around meeting basic needs of people getting somebody a urinary cath a, a urinary bottle or a blanket or a cup of tea these actions and experiences enable us to feel valued and heard and seen as a human being. They elicit in us a response that enables us to feel a sense of belonging and to connect with other people. The final one, making a difference, is a theme that weaved its way through all of the other themes. This is the action part of compassion, as I mentioned earlier. This is what it's all about, making a difference. We matter. We made a difference today. Once discovered, these themes enabled us to uh, create and, des and design practical actions that could promote these different themes of thriving. And importantly, it gave us a way to value thriving. We set out to find out what it is that helps us to thrive in the emergency department. What we found, we found what, motors, what matters most to us. We found what matters most to us as human beings. We found love. Thank you. <laughs>